Hey, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, just sitting outside, just doing normal adult grown person things. Nothing unusual here. Let's talk about my variegated bird's nest fern here. I've had some requests for updates in the older videos from where I unbox this and then when I originally had potted this up and uh, I thought while well, repotting it would be a good time to talk about it. But here's the thing, I already repotted it and none of that footage has any audio. Isn't that great? Gotta love when that happens. Not the end of the world. It's a pretty simple plant. Repot video, not totally necessary. You can run through it fairly quickly. It is a standard repot thing. Not much you missed there. Well, it wasn't that standard. I messed up a few times and had to redo some things. I don't like these attached drainage dishes. They hold too much water. They slow the flow down. Bird's nest ferns don't want to be sitting in water, so a drainage dish Really not a great idea unless it's raised up on some pebbles or something to separate it from the water that's down there in that reservoir. So I got out my diamond bit, threw this into a container, grabbed some water and just drilled a new hole in there. Pretty simple, pretty easy, not a lot to it. However, I didn't go all the way through. I left the small hole inside of the pot, which was We'll talk about that. Toss together a nice soil blend. It's just a spoma potty mix. I'd add some sand and some orchid bark and some pumice, charcoal, and you know, just various things to make sure that it's nice and fluffy and water can rush through it. Potted it up, gave it some water to test out the drainage, and uh, I really wasn't happy with how it was draining, even with the giant gaping hole in the drainage saucer that was in the bottom. You could see the water pulled up in the bottom where it just wasn't moving through. I gave it like 15 minutes and it's still just, I didn't like it. The soil was draining fine. The problem was the pot. Redrilled it so that the big hole goes all the way through the drainage dish and the bottom of the pot. Then I threw some screen in there just so that the soil doesn't flush out all over the place whenever the plant gets watered. Now basically caught up. So the issue here, I know the video is about the birds thus far and I'm focusing on the pot. But I did think I should like mention what was going on there. The problem is having that tiny little drainage hole that flushes out into a big one. When things aren't really homogenous, if you have layers that aren't even in the bottom of the pot, that actually slows the drainage down. That's where that conversation comes into play about whether or not we should have pebbles or rocks, whatever in the bottom of the containers for drainage. The concern is raising the saturation level up. So what happens is if there were pebbles in the bottom here, then that soil is going to hold on to a lot of moisture right around here because as it drains down, the drainage is all of a sudden like shocked and slowed or just changed. It's disrupted by having those pebbles or rocks in the bottom. Whereas if this were soil all the way through, then it would just evenly flush all of the way through. So that's what happened there. By having that smaller hole, it just disrupted the amount of flow that could get through the bottom of the pot. I knew that that might be an issue. I should have just drilled the hole all the way through to begin with, but I didn't. So here we are, everything's fine. The plant didn't seem to care. I didn't really have to do much with its roots when I repotted it. It all worked out, everything's okay. It's a bird's nest fern. Pretty simple, easy to grow house plant. I've had this one for what, two or three years, something like that. It's been about a year and a half to two years since its last repot. And it's done a good amount of growing in that time, but not what you would see with, or at least not what I feel like we would see with a bird's nest fern that isn't variegated. This one does seem to be very, very, very slow. You get about three sets of leaves out of it a year. Usually a couple during the summer, like about a month after I move it outside, it flushes out fairly heavily with some new foliage. It seems to just enjoy the transition to being moved outdoors. And then uh, there's normally another flush, I don't know, around late July into August, something like that maybe. And then perhaps one more during the uh, winter time when it's indoors. Here I didn't get that new flush of leaves that I always hope for during the winter time. And I was having to water this plant a lot. And that's how we know it's time to go ahead and repot the plant, right? The growth slows down, the plant's not responding to being watered. It's when you go, okay. Time to get you some fresh soil, get a new blend in there around those roots, give some more space to spread out. Soil blend that I did for this isn't like fully necessary for a bird's nest fern. In my experience, they seem to respond well to a nice gritty mix that some air can move through. But bird's nest ferns, you know, the splenniums in general are normally fairly sturdy. They prefer a good amount of humidity. They don't want to dry out for too terribly long but they aren't a fern that's just gonna shrivel up and die if you don't give that to them. They are pretty adaptable. The variegated one though, 
Yeah, maybe not quite as much. Or what I would speculate is that perhaps it is the same and you just notice the imperfections so much more because of the variegation in there. Where you can see where there have been times where things dried out just a little bit too much or something came in, took a bite out of the plant. Sun damage, dry air damage, edemia from too much nutrients, those sorts of things. It just shows more with that white foliage. Perhaps it just shows more with the white foliage. Maybe that's what's going on there. I don't really know. Perhaps the variegated one is just a little bit more of a diva. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Less chlorophyll in there. Maybe there's just not enough momentum within the plant for it to be quite as sturdy as ones that aren't variegated. I don't know, just a thought. Maybe that's what's going on there. But overall, this plant hasn't been difficult for me at all. Really, it's been a trooper. You know, there were some, the health stuff, the cancer and everything back in 2020, and I really wasn't able to take care of my house plants in this one. It just kept doing its thing. Didn't give me any issues, nothing. It didn't get fertilized more than maybe once or twice that summer, which is not very much. During the summertime, I have my plants outdoors and they get fertilized, I don't know, every other week, something like that. And it just gets a quarter strength all-purpose fertilizer. I use the Jack's watering fertilizer output or hose end fertilizer where you can just turn a little dial and it'll adjust from full strength to half strength to quarter strength and when I get to the plants like my ferns when I'm fertilizing I just dial that down so it gets a quarter strength same thing with my orchids and just anything with delicate roots makes it a lot easier to fertilize a lot of plants when you have that little dial and you can dial it down when using a soluble type fertilizer so with the birds as ferns I do prefer things like seaweed the like liquid kelp they really do appreciate that but the quarter strength all purpose. It's done just fine with that. I haven't really done anything unusual to care for this fern either. I just grown it like I would any other bird's nest fern, but I am much more careful about how much light it gets. It's, well, more so when it's outside than inside. Don't want direct light on really any of the bird's nest ferns unless they've really been acclimated very slowly to that. It's really bright filtered light in the morning and then shade throughout the afternoon when it's really hot outside and inside just really bright grow lights. I don't want them too close on the plant though. The soil blend might be a little bit extra for a bird's nest fern, but I have to compensate for the plants being grown indoors and then outdoors. Outdoors are getting hit by the misters, my drip emitters, multiple times a day when it's really hot outside. So it does need to drain very, very quickly. Still hold on to some moisture, but I just cannot have any water that sits around in there for very long. Still a fern though, so that soil does need to hold on to some moisture, especially when it's indoors where there's not as much humidity. Things are different now. Things are pretty humid out here and much warmer than they used to be. The humidity right now is at 79%. That's the fish tank temperature, but that's the hygrometer with the sensor on the 83. I don't know about that. Oh, the fog's on, that's why. Pretty sure that that said 75 before I fired up the mister back there. And that's ample for a bird's nest fern. They can take drier conditions as long as there aren't like strong winds or breezes or drafts blowing on them then it doesn't have to be super humid for them at least not in comparison to a lot of other ferns. And I haven't noticed this one being any more fussy or particular about its humidity than any other Asplenium nidus or what is this one? This is an Asplenium nidus. This is a Antiquum, I believe. I'm pretty sure. Antiquum. Overall, been a fun plant to grow. Grows like a snail, but it's so nice having something so lovely and pretty that just does its thing. I don't have to fuss with it very much. Like I said, I haven't repotted this in a couple of years. I will be hanging this when it goes outdoors. I'll put one of those, the, the uh, what's it called? You know, the ropey, like dungeon sort of swing thing. My mind just totally went blank there. Macrame, you know, the little swingy things we can put the pots in. I like them hanging outdoors just because it seems to help a lot of slugs. Slugs love these plants and having it hanging up, just they can't quite get to them is easily when they're not in contact with the surface that the slugs can move around on. Even though I've been talking about this plant growing like a snail, it's put on a good amount of size for the amount of time that I've had it, especially considering it doesn't have as much chlorophyll as one that isn't variegated. This is easily doubled in size. The fronds this past summer started coming out much thicker. They were more thin and strappy, whereas now they're very, very thick and heavy. Now look at how wide this one is. That's a really big white leaf. Very pretty leaf too. I love the variegation in this plant. I'm not obsessed with variegated plants, but there are some that just, it looks stunning in them. This is one of them. So there's the update. That's for the people who've been watching those videos, new subscribers or people who are just curious as of lately, like the past few months asking for updates on this plant. Here, there we go. It's been growing, not much has changed with it. Has a little bit of sun scorch, 
some bug damage. I've cut some of it out. Some of it's still on there and some, like, I guess, dry air wind damage. That's probably from before I had my new heater installed out here in the growth space. A lot of the dry air damage on here, I noticed about, I probably started showing up in December. And that was before I got the new heater out here, which was really contributed to being able to keep things very humid out here. Because it blows down on this water and that evaporates and things are pretty sticky. It hasn't progressed at all since then, so that's good. That's probably just too much time, like all of November and all of December out here. And a lot of January, actually, with drier air and much cooler temperatures. It's generally like 55 to 65 in here, up until the new heater got installed. And the humidity was anywhere from 30 to like 50%, depending on whether or not I had that fogger running. When that would run, that would raise it up, but I didn't like leaving it running when I wasn't around. All right, that was a fun plant chat and an explanation of how I totally screwed up repotting this plant today. I love this pot. I think it's such a pretty pot. I probably could have put it in something that already hangs, but Oh, I like it in that one. Comment down below, say hi. Tips, tricks, suggestions, your experiences with your bird's nest ferns, or just some of your favorite houseplant ferns, just houseplants, just say hi. Love talking to everybody. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.